I knew that um, when you're when you're in pain, when you're in crisis, when you're in trauma, that when people are out of balance emotionally because of stress, the normal way the brain works is it prepares for the worst. So when we're injured, we're in crisis, we're selecting the worst thing that could happen to us instead of the best thing that could happen to us, that could happen to us. And when you select that future, there's emotional response like fear or anxiety. Turns out that those chemicals give the body an arousal, they give them a rush, they give us a rush. So here I am trying to focus on what I do want to have happen, right. but my brain keeps going back to what I don't want to have happen. So <laughs> six and a half weeks of a dark night of the soul because yeah. I had to train my brain and I knew if I said the design has to be pure, it has to be complete, I have to reconstruct every vertebrae, if I lose my focus, yeah. When I start thinking about living in a wheelchair, whoops, that's the wrong signal. So just by by intuition, I started working on my presence, my ability to pay attention and stay present. And every time I lost the present moment, I would come back. And I started to notice that when I got frustrated and I did it, it would get, get worse. When I just noticed that it happened and I came back. No judgment after Yeah, there was just no emotional reaction. There was no charge. And I was able to navigate. And at the end of six weeks, just felt like I hit a tennis ball in the sweet like, spot. So were you just, um, so was this meditation, pure just meditation, or was this intentional of a visualization of something? It was both. Visualizing? It was both. I knew that I'd have to first get in the present moment. Yeah. Uh, you know when someone's present with you in your life because they're paying attention. You yeah. know when they're not present with you. They're not paying attention. So this is an intelligence. i got to be present with it and create a very clear design. Uh, so then I would have to, what I knew from my background in hypnosis is I had, I would have to slow my brain waves down, mm -hmm. get me on my analytical mind. Now, once I'm in that state, mm -hmm. I would have a clear intention, mm -hmm. a very clear intention and a very clear focus. And when I started doing it well, my emotional state started to change. Instead of being frustrated, mm -hmm. fearful, impatient, resentful, I was feeling joy and freedom and because I was suppressing those emotional states every time I got present. Because those emotions bring us back to the past. So I had to work over time. And what I didn't know that I was doing the whole entire time was I was improving my brain's ability to pay attention and focus. That means I could visualize better. Yeah. But secondly, more importantly, I was able to relax more into the present moment. And by doing that and holding a very clear picture, uh, I started to notice very strong changes in my brain. My, I was laying down new circuits. It was creating a new mind. Nerve cells that fire together, wire together. You keep doing it, just like driving a race car, it's gonna get easier because you, you, you become what you practice. But you gotta pay attention, you gotta repeat it, you gotta learn, you gotta keep experiencing. So at the end of six weeks, it just kind of all came together. But those six weeks, I was struggling because it was just kind of this unlearning process. It yeah. was pruning it's neurological, breaking habits of thought and, and emotions. And, uh, and then it worked. And so then um, I was back on my feet in 10 weeks. And, and then I just said if I was ever able to walk again, I'd spend the rest of my life uh, studying the mind-body connection and mind over matter. And that's what I've been doing since 1986. I love medicine and I have a great respect for it and it really works yeah. well for chronic and uh, acute conditions. Yeah. Break your leg, uh, yeah. and the yeah. yeah. But chronic health conditions require a lifestyle change. That means you gotta make different choices. And the hardest part about change is making a choice. So go back 30 years, the doctor said to you, she said, hey, you need this kind of health treatment for this health condition. We're going to take out your uterus. If we're in there, we'll take out your gallbladder. Hmm. Everybody said, oh, great. Thank you. You know, mm. yeah, you've take got, it all. I don't yeah, need it. Fast forward to today, you got information. And information is awareness. And awareness is consciousness. So there's a change in consciousness about what's available. So when people get a diagnosis today, they don't just sign on the dotted line. They actually research their own yeah. health condition. Yeah. When you do that, it gives you more choices to make. So then when they start saying to the doctor, hey, I'd like to try this treatment or I'd like to try this therapy, and the doctor says, oh, that doesn't work or I don't know anything about that. They say, great time to find a new doctor. So people are starting to make better health choices when they're in a better position. So during that time, there was not a lot of evidence back in the 80s and yeah. 90s that said that this was possible. In fact, you were considered a hippie, right? Yeah. But now you fast forward to today, and because information is so available, and people are starting to apply that information, 
Now we're starting to see dramatic changes. We've done numerous brain scans to show that you can change your brain in four days for the better. 80% of a thousand people had a more than 90% change in their brain for the better just by practicing meditation. We know that you can train your heart to work more coherently. That means that when you're angry, when you're frustrated, when you're impatient, your heart beats out of rhythm. That's how powerful you are. And it really suppresses certain genes. So then change your emotional state. Wow, you start to see people practicing this kind of regulations. We have evidence that people can do that. We have evidence you can change your genes in four days. You can change your gene expression. You can make your immune system stronger mm -hmm. by changing your emotional state. You can lengthen your life mm -hmm. with um, just 60 days of meditation, five days a week. We've proven that you can lengthen your telomere. So now you have evidence that yeah. common people can do yeah. the uncommon. You don't have to be a monk. You don't have to be a nun. You don't have to be a priest, an academic. The common people are beginning to wrap their minds right. around this and do There's the evidence. uncommon. This isn't just mystical information. So there it is. Science is that model. And then we have testimony. Like we have people that have healed themselves of stage four cancer, not once, not twice, not three times, and four times over and over again. We have people that have healed themselves that were blind, that were deaf, that had tumors, uh, that had uh, Graves' disease, Hashimoto's symptoms, numerous Parkinson's patients, brain injuries, uh, MS, rheumatoid arthritis, and Is this the stuff Jesus was doing back in the day? I mean, that's well, what I'm hearing. Well, it's well, like well, curing you know, blindness and stuff. Well, and no, like, if anybody is surprised, I yeah, have to tell you that yeah. it's me. I never yeah. thought I would see these kind of changes. Now you have evidence. evidence. You have evidence right now in testimony. So you know, evidence becomes the loudest voice, right? Yeah. So doctors now are saying, hey, uh, um, you're not really responding to treatment. I'm, why don't you try this? Now, let me tell you why they're saying that. And that's because if you say, try this, and you see the evidence of people getting better, and the person's not responding to treatment, what else do you have? And doctors are now referring, oncologists are referring patients right, right to our office, uh, right to our events, because it's an option for them. So then you have three types of stress, physical, chemical, and emotional. Stress is when your brain and body are not in balance. Mm -hmm. The stress response is what your body innately does to return it back to order. All organisms can tolerate short-term stress. Mm -hmm. But the chronic stress is what pushes the genetic buttons that create disease. Now, most stress ends up as emotional or psychological stress. So physical stress, trauma, accidents, injuries, falls. Chemical stress, toxins, pesticides, pollutants, bacteria, viruses, molds, hangovers. And then you have emotional stress, family tragedies, second mortgages, single parenting, 401ks, you know, traffic, whatever. And all of those things not the brain and body out of homeostasis. But the emotional stress is the challenge because the person can be taking care of their body, you know, eating all the right foods, taking all the drugs, taking all the right vitamins, all the enzymes, doing the things, doing yoga, doing long distance running, whatever it is that they're into. But if they're living in constant fear mm -hmm. because of some threat in their outer world that's either real or imagined, or they're, they're so uh, mismanaging of their thoughts that those thoughts keep producing the fear, so turning on that stress response by mm -hmm. thought alone, uh, then they could eat the most organic, healthy diet, do all the right exercise, but right. the body's living in survival because that's stress. So now you're mobilizing all this energy for some threat in your outer world. And there's no energy in your inner world for growth and repair. And so you, your body is actually utilizing all of its vital resources when it's feeling fear, when it's feeling aggression or anger, when it's feeling pain and suffering. Yeah. The body is mobilizing enormous amounts of resources. If you're being chased by a tiger, you're not going to use 20% of your resources. You're going to go all in, right? <laughs> so then what if it's not a tiger? What if it's just traffic? So what was once highly that adaptive... Gets me becomes very maladaptive. And when you turn on the stress response and you can't turn it off, now you're headed for a disease.